Airy Middleton Sheffield Neve, DSOOBEMCTD, January 23, 1916 March 30, 1979, was a British Army officer, barrister, and politician. During World War II, Neve was the first British officer to successfully escape from the German prisoner of war camp off Log IVC at Colditz Castle, and later worked for MI9. After the war he served with the International Military Tribunal at the Nuremberg Trials. He later became Conservative Member of Parliament, MP, for Abingdon. Neve was assassinated in 1979 in a car bomb attack at the House of Commons. The Irish National Liberation Army, INLA, claimed responsibility. Early Life Neve was the son of Sheffield Airy Neve CMG, OB, 1879-1961, a well-known entomologist, who lived at Ingatestone, Essex, and his wife Dorothy, D. 1943, the daughter of Arthur Thompson Middleton. His father was the grandson of Sheffield Neve the third son of Sir Thomas Neve, 2nd Baronet, C. Neve Baronets. The family came to prominence as merchants in the West Indies during the 18th century and were raised to the peerage during the life of Richard Neve, Governor of the Bank of England. Neve spent his early years in Knightsbridge in London, before he moved to Beaconsfield. Neve was sent to St. Ronan's School, Worthing, and from there, in 1929, he went to Eton College. He went on to study jurisprudence at Merton College, Oxford. While at Eton, Neve composed a prize-winning essay in 1933 that examined the likely consequences of Adolf Hitler's rise to supreme power in Germany, and Neve predicted then that another widespread war would break out in Europe in the near future. Neve had earlier been on a visit to Germany and he witnessed the Nazi-German methods of grasping political and military power in their hands. At Eton, Neve served in the school cadet corps as a cadet lance corporal, and received a territorial commission as a second lieutenant in the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry on December 11, 1935. When Neve went to Oxford University, he purchased and read the entire written works of the writer Karl von Clausewitz. When Neve was asked why, he answered, since war coming, it only sensible to learn as much as possible about the art of waging it. During 1938, Neve completed his third class degree in the study of jurisprudence. By his own admission, while at Oxford University, Neve did only the minimal amount of academic work that was required of him by his tutors. Wartime Service Neve transferred his territorial commission to the Royal Engineers on May 2, 1938 and following the outbreak of war he was mobilized. Sent to France in February 1940 with 1st Searchlight Regiment, Royal Artillery, he was wounded and captured by the Germans at Calais on May 23, 1940. He was imprisoned at Offlog 9A H near Spangenberg and in February 1941 moved to Stalag XXA near Thorn in German occupied western Poland. Meanwhile, Neve's commission was transferred to the Royal Artillery on August 1, 1940. In April 1941, he escaped from Thorn with Norman Forbes. They were captured near Ilo while trying to enter Soviet-controlled Poland and were briefly in the hands of the Gestapo. In May, they were both sent to Offlog IVC, often referred to as Kolditz Castle because of its location. Neve made his first attempt to escape from Kolditz on August 28, 1941 disguised as a German NCO. He did not get out of the castle as his hastily contrived German uniform made from a Polish army tunic and cap painted with scenery paint, was rendered bright green under the prison search lights. Together with Dutch officer Anthony Ludin he made a second attempt on January 5, 1942, again in disguise. Better uniforms and escape route, they made a quick exit from a theatrical production using the trap door beneath the stage got them out of the prison and by train and on foot they travelled to Leipzig and Ulm and finally reached the border to Switzerland near St. Jean. Via France, Spain and Gibraltar, 
Neve returned to England in April 1942. Neve was the first British officer to escape from Colditz Castle. On May 12, 1942, shortly after his return to England, he was decorated with the Military Cross. He was subsequently promoted to War Substantive Captain and to the permanent rank of Captain on April 11, 1945. A temporary major at the war's end, he was appointed an MBE, Military Division, on August 30, 1945, and awarded the DSO on October 18. As a result, the earlier award of the MBE was cancelled on October 25th. He was later recruited as an intelligence agent for MI9. While at MI9, he was the immediate superior of Michael Bentine. He also served with the International Military Tribunal at the Nuremberg Trials, investigating Krupp. As a well-known war hero as well as a qualified lawyer who spoke fluent German he was honored with the role of reading the indictments to the Nazi leaders on trial. He wrote several books about his war experiences including an account of the trials. A temporary lieutenant colonel by 1947, he was appointed an OBE, military division, in that year's birthday honors. He was awarded the Bronze Star by the U.S. government on July 23, 1948, and was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel on April 1, 1950. At the same time, his promotion to Acting Major was gazetted, with retroactive effect from April 16, 1948. He entered the reserves on September 21, 1951. Political Career Neve stood for the Conservative Party at the 1950 election in Thurrock and at Ealing North in 1951. He was elected for Abingdon in a by-election in June 1953, but his career was held back by a heart attack he suffered in 1959. He was a governor of Imperial College between 1963 and 1971 and was a member of the House of Commons Select Committee on Science and Technology between 1965 and 1970. Edward Heath, when Chief Whip, was alleged to have told Neve that after he suffered his heart attack his career was finished but in his 1998 autobiography, Heath strongly denied ever making such a remark. He admitted that in December 1974 Neve had told him to stand down for the good of the party. During the final two months of 1974, Neve had asked Keith Joseph, William Whitelaw and Edward Dukin to stand against Heath, and said that in the case of any of them challenging for the party leadership, he would be their campaign manager. When all three refused to stand, Neve agreed to be the campaign manager for Margaret Thatcher's attempt to become leader of the Conservative Party, that was eventually successful. When Thatcher was elected leader in February 1975, Neve was rewarded by becoming head of her private office. He was then appointed Shadow Secretary of State for Northern Ireland and, at the time of his death, was poised to attain the equivalent cabinet position in the event of the Conservatives winning the general election of 1979. In opposition, Neve was a strong supporter of Roy Mason, who had extended the policy of Ulsterization. Neve was author of the new and radical conservative policy of abandoning devolution in Northern Ireland if there was no early progress in that regard, and concentrating on local government reform instead. This integrationist policy was hastily abandoned by Humphrey Atkins, who became Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, the role Neve had shadowed. Politician Tony Benn records in his diary, February 17, 1981, that a journalist from the New Statesman, Duncan Campbell, told him that he had received information two years previously, from an intelligence agent, that Neve had planned to have been assassinated if, Following the election of Labour government, Labour leader James Callaghan resigned and there was a possibility that Ben might be elected in his place. Campbell claimed that the agent was ready to give his name and the new statesman was going to print the story. Ben, however, discounted the validity of the story, writing in his diary, No one will believe for a moment that Airy Neve would have done such a thing. 
The magazine printed the story on February 20, 1981, naming the agent as Lee Tracy. Tracy claimed to have met Neve, who asked him to join a team of intelligence and security specialists which would make sure Ben was stopped. A planned second meeting never took place because Neve was killed. Assassination Ari Neve was killed on March 30, 1979, when a magnetic car bomb fitted with a ball-bearing tilt switch exploded under his new Vauxhall Cavalier at 14.58 as he drove out of the Palace of Westminster Car Park. He lost his right leg below the knee and his left was hanging on by a flap of skin. Neve died in Westminster Hospital an hour after being freed from the wreckage without having regained consciousness. The Irish National Liberation Army, INLA, an Irish Republican paramilitary group, claimed responsibility for the killing. Conservative leader Margaret Thatcher led tributes, by saying. He was one of freedom's warriors. No one knew of the great man he was, except those nearest to him. He was staunch, brave, true, strong, but he was very gentle and kind and loyal. It's a rare combination of qualities. There's no one else who can quite fill them. I, and so many other people, owe so much to him and now we must carry on for the things he fought for and not let the people who got him triumph. Labour Prime Minister James Callaghan said, no effort will be spared to bring the murderers to justice and to rid the United Kingdom of the scourge of terrorism. The INLA issued a statement regarding the killing in the August 1979 edition of the Starry Plough. In March, retired terrorist and supporter of capital punishment, Ari Neve, got a taste of his own medicine when an INLA unit pulled off the operation of the decade and blew him to bits inside the impregnable palace of Westminster. The nauseous Margaret Thatcher snivelled on television that he was an incalculable loss and so he was to the British ruling class. Neve's death came just two days after the vote of no confidence which brought down Callaghan's government and a few weeks before the 1979 general election, which brought about a conservative victory and saw Thatcher come to power as Prime Minister. Neve's wife Diana, whom he married on December 29, 1942, was subsequently elevated to the House of Lords as Baroness Airy of Abingdon. Neve's biographer Paul Routledge met a member of the Irish Republican Socialist Party, the political wing of INLA, who was involved in the killing of Neve and who told Routledge that Neve would have been very successful at that job. He would have brought the armed struggle to its knees. As a result of Neve's assassination the INLA was declared illegal across the whole of the United Kingdom on July 2, 1979. Conspiracy Theories Whilst working in the House of Commons as Paddy Ashdown's research assistant, Kevin Cahill claims to have had around six conversations with the security staff there. The most frequent remark was that everyone knew the story behind Neve's death but no one could talk about it in detail, because it would have been too dangerous. Cahill claims they did not believe Inla killed Neve. Instead, it was an inside job. Cahill concluded that Neve was killed by MI6 agents working with the CIA because Neve sought to prosecute senior figures in the intelligence establishment for corruption. Another person who did not accept the generally accepted version of events was Enoch Powell, the Ulster Unionist MP. Powell claimed in an interview with The Guardian on January 9, 1984 the Americans had killed Neve, along with Lord Mountbatten and Robert Bradford MP. He claimed the evidence came from a member of the Royal Ulster Constabulary with whom he had a conversation. On October 18, 1986 Powell returned to the subject of Neve's death in a speech to conservative students in Birmingham. He told them the Inla had not killed Neve, but rather, had been assassinated by MI6 and their friends. Powell claimed Neve's Northern Ireland policy had been one of integration with the rest of the UK and that the Americans feared that this process, if implemented by Neve, would have been irreversible. His killing, alleged Powell, was intended to make the British government adopt a policy more acceptable to America in her aim of a united Ireland within NATO. 
fictional account of murder. In 2014, 35 years after Neve's death, it was reported that a fictionalized account of Neve's murder was to be used in a Channel 4 drama. The drama, Utopia, portrays Neve as a drinker who colluded with spies and portrays his assassination as perpetrated by MI5. This led to condemnation of the broadcaster, with Norman Tebbit, a friend and colleague of Neve and survivor of the Brighton Hotel bombing in 1984 saying to attack a man like that who is dead and cannot defend himself is despicable. Neve's family, who had not been consulted about the program, announced their intention to take action to prevent the program from being broadcast, claiming it had fictionalized the atrocity in the name of entertainment as well as falsely depicting him as a debauched and conniving figure. Media Depictions Neve was portrayed by Jeffrey Poundset in Nuremberg, 2000, Dermot Crowley in Margaret, 2009, Nicholas Farrell in The Iron Lady, 2011, and Tim McInerney in Utopia, 2014. Works 1953 They Have Their Exits 1954 Little Cyclone 1969 Saturday at MI9, U.S. Title, The Escape Room 1972 The Flames of Calais, A Soldier's Battle, 1940 1978 Nuremberg, U.S. Title, On Trial at Nuremberg Please subscribe and thanks for watching.